Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Bella. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk the season premiere. Oh, my God. Of season 19. Ooh, la, la. Of Sister Wives. So excited. You couldn't stop us if you tried. <laughs> if there was no internet, if there was no camera, we would still be here. I yeah. would be drinking and we would be screaming into the void about Cody Brown. 1000%. Who is just getting balder and balder. Uh, girl. I mean, did you see him at the blackjack yes. table with his curls falling in front of his face it's and so bad. all of these acres and acres of skin on his head? And that's what Robin gets to every yeah. day enjoy your life beb girl <laughs> well before we get into it we do have to issue a disclaimer please hide your wife and hide your kids this is a politically incorrect podcast we say a lot of bad words mm -hmm. we have stupid opinions and we're stubborn about it yeah so if you're sensitive <laughs> you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby but if you're ready to party and talk about some Mormonism, Ooh. welcome to this dumpster. And if you are down to party with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at. We are starting Smothered Girl in October. And that shit is crazy. And we are wrapping up the entire fourth season of Couples Therapy. And we've yes. been having so much fun with Couples oh, Therapy. So good. I feel so smart when I talk about Me psychology. Too. <laughs> so we're having a gay old time, especially her. She's yeah. gay. Mm. So definitely join us on Patreon. And if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because everything you do helps us to attract raccoons yeah. into the dumpster. And so thank you. In advance. Thank you. All right, before we get into the episode, I did have like a little tidbit of something I had heard about from the Sister what? Wives universe, which concerns Janelle, my favorite. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Your favorite. Mm -hmm. Apparently, she put up Garrison's townhome yeah, for sale. I saw that. I guess it's for sale for like $425,000 in lot. Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. It is going up for, I guess, 100000 more than he paid for it. Yeah. And so we'll see if it sells. I hope that it does. I think that's kind of the last little bit of it for her to resolve before yeah. she can maybe fully be in North Carolina. I don't know. Probably. But I hope she gets the proceeds of that sale. Me too. I can't help but being a despicable raccoon and wondering to myself, is Cody going to get any of that money? Dude, he might. He might be fighting for it. I could see Cody Brown fighting for it. I really could. No, I yeah. just can't imagine that Garrison, who was in the military, wouldn't have been exceedingly crystal clear about who his beneficiaries were. Yeah. But, but then, mm -hmm. like just a couple years previous, he had an okay relationship with Cody. So I don't know. I don't know. Girl, I don't know either. It's not for us to speculate, but we will. No, yeah. And we might find out about it in um, 2029. Yeah, because yeah. we are still in 2022 for season 19. And, you know, we say, this, started. we say this all the time. I mean, it's not like we haven't all cried about it before but it's really exhausting it's actually bullshit in my opinion i think it's stupid like i understand being like you know a year behind like nine months behind sure totally understandable you got to film and whatever two whole years though like why are we seeing christine date david why are we seeing McKelty with her big ass pregnant belly? And Why are we seeing that? In her interstitials, in her talking head, she's got this stupid pillow acting as if she's still pregnant, even though she's, I don't know, a hundred pounds less now than like, she was back then. What the fuck? It's like such a big middle finger to the entire audience because we know what's going on, but right. they, they won't just do the right thing. No, they and won't. show us what's going on now. Now they did address at the top of the episode mm -hmm. The tragic loss of Garrison. Yeah. And I had heard, and I think some of you have as well, that they are going to, I think, show the aftermath of what happened with Garrison at the end of this season. Okay. And so I was wondering to myself, self, does that mean that we're going to bring the whole timeline for the show up into 2024 by the end of this season? Please. But you know what? We're not going to. I don't think so. <laughs> because they showed us 
the whole ass wedding special uh-huh. for Christine. Yeah. And then now we're going all the way back to the beginning of the courtship. I'm like, why? I don't understand. Why? Like, do people want to see this? Like, I don't want to see it. I don't. I don't care. I would like to be a little bit more present because it's like, I'm mad at Cody Brown for how he's acting, right? In these interstitials. But like, this is 2022 Cody Brown that we're seeing. Like, this is no, still... No, it's not. This is, well, this is a more recent Cody mm-hmm. Brown because it's a more recent Mary. Mary is a lot thinner. She lost weight within the last six months. So her on the couch interviews are probably within the last three months, which makes me think that some of the couch interviews with Cody and also Janelle are also more recent. Mm-hmm. That's All my of thought. Them? I don't know about all of them. See, some of them look a little recycled, but some of them I do think based on the curling, <laughs> based on the balding, um, and also, frankly, based on his attitude, they do seem to be a bit more recent. That's just my opinion. What do y'all think? Really? I thought his attitude was still season 18 Cody Brown, like no, still being a piece of shit. because he was crying a little bit and he was talking about his vision that is no more. He was talking about how he doesn't have faith and he prays different. I don't know. I, I think that some of these interstitials are a bit more modern 2024 I mean, but then that's like the other thing that's stupid is like if you're gonna film modern interstitials why are we reacting right. to old footage then right. like why can't we have the current footage match with the current interstitials makes no sense well like even in this episode mary says you know last week we had the final conversation cody and i and they show her at the picnic bench on yeah. coyote pass having the conversation at least i don't know 60 or 70 pounds heavier mm-hmm. than one week later with right. you now on the couch no like that's why they're treating us like we're dumb yeah and i hate that yeah it's really stupid because if you know the fan base mm-hmm. like everybody is picking apart every single minute part of footage so like come on like why can't we just catch up well but be here now yeah wherever you go there you are and right yeah. now you're in a dumpster bitch i'm here <laughs> i'm still with watching season 19 yeah and this is what we got so yeah. let's celebrate it and yeah. let's get into it all right well, we start off with robin and cody at coyote pass which i thought was kind of interesting because yeah. they're trying to figure out what the fuck to do with all this land mm-hmm. and cody wants to sell it he's like this place is horrible <laughs> gives me bad memories makes me angry and robin's like but the dream i miss the family i can't let go of the dream (laughs) every night before i lay my head on my pillow i envision my house right over there and janelle's house right over there and mary's and i guess christine's (laughs) but she's still trying to get us to believe that she believes in this dream and i don't think she does no Way. She also talks about the loan. Did you catch that? Yeah, she did kind of mention that a little bit. Yeah, she says if they don't pay it off by a specific date, which I want to say was that the, I, my years are blending together. I think that was this summer, right? That they paid it off, or was it last summer? Did they pay it off entirely? Yeah, they all okay. paid it off. I th- I think maybe it was last summer, but they paid it off. So this was filmed right before that. But oh she calls their contract stupid yeah which i thought was interesting owner financing yeah this developer or this owner has agreed to sell you these parcels of land and you're supposed to make payments i would presume Mm -hmm. toward the principal and ultimately pay it off by a certain date that was the agreement but it's stupid to you because you're stupid (laughs) and you don't know what creative financing is and you've never had to get your own mortgage well i guess you did season four but yeah but she doesn't know anything about it. Well, I think it's silly because I'm like every single financing thing that they have done, the Brown family has done on TV has been stupid. Yeah. Like every decision they've made has been dumb. So if you want to call Coyote Pass stupid because nobody else is paying for it and now you and mm-hmm. Cody have to deal with it. Sorry, tough luck. Yeah. I'm wondering what Janelle's position is at this time. I mean, I'm presuming we're late 2022, 2023. She hasn't made the decision to buy the plot of land in North Carolina yet. So I'm wondering if she's wondering to herself whether she wants to build out there or whether she wants to scrap the whole thing. It seems like she's going back and forth because later in the episode, they talk about getting property up in Montana. Mm -hmm. So and I don't know if Janelle is like a part of that. Like I know Maddie is talking about building property up up in Montana. So it just seems like Janelle is kind of going with the flow and Mm -hmm. trying to figure shit out. But I don't know. It'd be nice to see more conversations about Coyote Pass, though. And like 
the money and luring up. I know she's not going to do it, but we do get to flash on over to Janelle talking about how she hasn't really spoken to Cody in a very long time. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know really what's going on with Coyote Pass. We also hear from Christine, who's just so happy to be single. My God. She's in her single era. Yeah. She doesn't give a shit. And she talks about how she was able to sell her home in Flagstaff and take the full entire proceeds of that sale and move to Utah. And then we skip on over to Cody, who's a bit bitter about it. Uh-huh. Um, the family helped her buy that house in Flagstaff, and then she just sold it and took all the money. Which is so wild to me. I'm like, what do you mean by the family? Yeah. You and Robin didn't do shit, boyo. Yeah, and, and everybody paid for your property too. So does mm-hmm. that mean if you're butthurt about Christine that they get to be butthurt about you and your home with Robin that they put into? What about that? No, because if they are butthurt, then he would say they're just bitter towards him and they're making him to be the villain because Cody Brown is the ultimate victim here. Right. He is the one that has been fucked over the most. Okay. Not Christine, not Janelle, not Mary. Cody Brown. I mean, he has the audacity, excuse me, the mandacity to say something like, what did I do? Oh my God. What did I do wrong? I'm like, (laughs) as if it's not cataloged episode after episode, season after season about how you have treated your family, your children and your wives. It's wild. How do you not know what you may or may not have contributed to the demise of these relationships? Denial. He's crazy. Totally in denial. And he's Delulu. Yep. He's crazy. Yep. And then after the whole Coyote Pass thing, then we have McKelty with her sprinkle. Yeah. For her twins that are already born. Yeah. They're two years old Been right born. Now. I think they're in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're getting married with children of their own at this <laughs> point. Yeah. But McKelty's big and pregnant. Yes, she is. Too Many Tacos Tony is there. Mm-hmm. Christine's hosting the sprinkle. It's some like gambling Vegas blackjack Dublin down something's going on but the big news is that McKelty wants Cody and Robin there Mm -hmm. and she also wants Christine there and she just wants her adult parents to get a grip and get along that's fair it is fair in my opinion I've been seeing a lot of criticism of McKelty online being like oh my god how dare she do that to Christine I'm like she's still a child though yeah and she's having twins and yeah. she wants her father to be a part of that and even though we hate cody yeah and we have every right to <laughs> yeah. mckelty doesn't feel the same way at this time exactly so she wants robin there and she wants cody there yeah and i think that's fine i guess but they're nervous honey oh my god did you oh see robin gosh. just standing in the doorway so awkward oh turtle just smiling and so pretending to blend in but i'm like woman you look really unhappy, really unsettled, mm-hmm. and I love it. And there's Christine at the blackjack table. Just glowing. Just talking with everybody because she's a social butterfly. Mm-hmm. And Robin could never. Oh, never at all. Mm-mm. Well, Robin's also walking around with like weird little weights in her hands the whole entire time. Really? Yeah. I noticed it on Reddit. Somebody oh. was pointing it out like, why is she wear- holding weights? Like little three pound weights. That's so interesting. I to- I missed that entirely. Yeah, it was super bizarre. And then Cody's just sitting there staring, brooding at everybody and christine's like i'm not gonna say hi to them okay and robin says to the camera (laughs) the last time i saw christine was when she told me she did not want to see my me she did not want a relationship with me or my children anymore which never happened was never said and we have rolled back the footage countless times i do believe you've seen it by now robin yeah Christine never said that she just needed some space. She just needed some time. But she's running with this victim narrative. And Mm -hmm. oh my God, lady, get over it. It drives me crazy. It's bizarre that she's still putting this out. But like her and Cody are perfect for each other because they're both acting like victims. They both act like everybody hates them because they do. Mm -hmm. Everybody does hate you. But like you could make this better. You you guys have all the power to make it better. But you don't. Yeah, and so Robin's like, well, she didn't want any relationship with me, so I'm just going to leave her alone, and she can be over in that corner of the house, and I'm not going to bug her. Okay. No, you're scared. Yeah. You don't want to go up and just, you know, take the higher road Mm -hmm. and say, hey, Christine, how are you doing? Nice to see you. And that's all we have to do as adults. It's not a big deal. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, y'all are old. Like, Mm -hmm. why can't you act like you're big age? Why do we have to act like we're in high school, acting all immature like this? It's wild to me. Bizarre. I mean, Christine is acting a little petty, being like, I'm not going to be friendly, but that's fine, in my opinion. Yes. Did you notice when Cody walked in, he beelined toward McKelty's 
daughter and truly was sitting like right next to the baby Mm -hmm. and he said hi to the baby he played with the baby's toy and at some point truly said hi dad and he said oh hi truly like completely ignored yeah truly absolutely wild to me that he thinks that he did nothing wrong when he acts like this with his kids Mm -hmm. like poor truly truly was born on this show yeah we got to see the footage of this she we got to see her grow up without a dad Mm -hmm. that sucks and she didn't ask to be born into this crazy mormon family and he didn't even notice her leading me to believe he's really not that fond of her Mm -mm. and another child that i saw at the sprinkle that was kind of shying away from cody was isabel Mm. she was hanging out a lot with christine and i was wondering what that relationship is like because last season over christmas remember isabel went and visited and it was right. super awkward and then that got me thinking bitch <laughs> <laughs> about the sale of cody and robin's home and mm. all of their multi-thousand dollar knickknacks mm. and things that are strewn around that home and how christine had to rustle up the money for Isabel's scoliosis surgery Mm. and how I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think I am. I don't think Cody put anything toward that. Given the pain that Isabel was in for years, asking for some kind of surgical intervention for years, but remember they kept making her do exercises Mm. and do all of this shit because they wanted to put that surgery off. And then when she finally got it, he didn't go because of COVID. Right. I can't be gone for longer than three nights because of Robin. (laughs) And I don't think he paid any money into it. Meanwhile, he's siphoning, allegedly, siphoning all of the cash out of the Brown LLC and buying these ugly ass paintings (sighs) and purple linens and rugs. Ugh. And crystal towers and bears that are hugging and phoenixes (laughs) rising. And poor Isabel. And maybe that's why she doesn't want to hang out with you at the Sprinkle Cody. Dude, I didn't even think about that, but you're so right. Because if I was her, and I have been her with my own dad, and I saw all that shit, I would be so bitter. I'm still bitter Mm -hmm. over my own stuff. So poor Isabel, dude. I would be livid. She doesn't know at this time. Well, she does go and visit. So she can see how big the house is. Yeah. But she doesn't know the value of things. But all of these kids Mm -hmm. and all of these wives now know some of what was in the house. And you know they packed away most of that shit. Yeah. They see some of the wealth that's in that house and they have to be asking themselves, well, why was my mom living in an RV just trying to uh, cobble together a a, a casita? Mm -hmm. Why was Mary going to live in a barn dominium while you guys are over here living like kings and queens? Seriously. Millions of dollars with all of this stuff. Oh, such a good point. I wish we could hear more from these kids. Me too. I hope one day we will. That would be so great. Maybe in 2029. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) we get season 22 or something. Oh, God. And then the other thing that happened at the sprinkle was Cody and Robin basically saying in their interstitials saying like, oh, Christine's been bad mouthing me to the kids. And so that's probably soured my relationship with them. And I'm like, this again? Mm -hmm. Why are we bringing this up again? Christine's not bad mouthing you. Well, maybe she is, but you deserve it. But the way he sets it up, though, is he says... I see what she's saying in public. Yeah, right. So I can only imagine what she's saying to our kids. But using the same measure, Mm -hmm. what the fuck are you saying about her in public? That you were not attractive to her, that you never loved her, calling her calling her all manner of names disparaging her to her face and to the camera what about you though it's like this blind spot that just encompasses him and encompasses robin and they can see nothing that they're doing wrong or how they're contributing to it it's crazy making it's so crazy or even what he was saying about the kids too he was calling them assholes and narcissists Mm -hmm. and stupid Stupid. last season Mm -hmm. so fuck you dude yep talking about how the wives are talking bad about you publicly and to the kids you, like you said, you deserve it. Yeah. Well, why do you think that is? I mean, maybe ask yourself the question in therapy yeah. to get to the bottom of it, you old coot. <laughs> For real. God. Old balding coot. I can't stand him. He's the worst. And then we also heard from Robin that her and Cody are in a bad place in their marriage. Your eyebrows are in a bad place. I know. <laughs> Your eyebrows are in a bad place. They're really bad. I know you're trying to fix them, but they're even darker and they're thicker horrible. and more noticeable. And you should go to like a professional brow person. Yeah. 
Anyway, sorry, I can't stand her either. No, for real. I'm triggered. But like, how are we supposed to believe that you guys are having a hard time in your marriage? Like, I give a fuck. Yeah. Honestly, I don't give a shit. Unless you're going to leave him and have a tell-all book and talk about how she won't. terrible he is. But you won't because you guys are soulmates. I don't believe it at all. I mean, I, I think if there's anything Robin's unhappy about, it is the loss of funds and the streams of yeah. income that she previously clearly had access to totally. based on her Dickensian village alone. Yep. She no longer has Christine's money, Mary's money, Janelle's money. She no longer can rob the coffers. And so yep. I believe she's unhappy about that. And I don't think Cody has a plan for their future necessarily. No. And I think we were talking last week about like they must, they're dumb people, mm -hmm. but they must have the capacity to see that sh this gravy train is about to end. I don't know, two years, five years if you're lucky. Oh, yeah. But then what? Robin, you don't work. Mm -hmm. Cody doesn't work. So what are you going to do? So maybe she's unhappy about that. But I don't think she's unhappy in her relationship. No, yeah. That's the dream that she's holding on to is the dream of living a life of luxury on the backs of everybody else because she doesn't want to have to work for it. And that's why when we were talking about them selling their house, like I can't see them getting a $4 million home in Flagstaff. There's no way they can fucking afford it. I hope they end up in a dorm apartment. Like Janelle. Yeah. Yes. Literally, I hope they end up in that same apartment. Robin would never. Oh, my God. She would never do that. No, she wouldn't. She is so invested in appearances and yep. to go backward like that. I think she'd sooner leave Cody Brown. <laughs> she'd sooner leave Cody Brown. She'd be better off financially if she left live in an apartment. Of course. Yeah. Yep. And then he would be broke in a dad apartment. That'd be so great. Oh, I'd love to see it. Right. Um, And then Cody crying about the loss of his dream. Okay. And, and you so thought this was genuine? Let's just all join our raccoon claws. Okay. And just like have a thought about it because I did see some moisture in his eyes and he made sure that I noticed that he kind of stumbled <laughs> over his words. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. But I think I did feel that he was feeling that in the moment, that he was at least acknowledging that that big vision, that big dream is no longer possible. And he doesn't even know what the vision is anymore because he's not a part of it anymore. And I feel like he's feeling the loss of that. Hmm. I do. But it stops right there. Yeah. Like, woe is me. Right. They don't include me. They don't love me. It never goes beyond that to what Mary ends up talking about with her friend Brandy, which is like, one of these days you are going to realize what you have lost. And Mary's like, whether you like it or not, because once you get to Kolob, honey, and you True. have Mormon God and Jesus talking to you about how you destroyed all these marriages, like you're going to have to take accountability for it. True. Like he can't do that though. That's well, yeah. too far. That's a bridge too far for him. Well, yeah, because to sit in that shame would be immense. It would be crazy crazy like there's so much guilt there there's so much responsibility you would have to take and like he should take it I'm not saying he shouldn't but like that's why he's delusional and holding on to this fake idea of a dream that didn't even really exist because you didn't make any effort you didn't work for it no you at expected all. these other women to do that work for you exactly and even then, you were still hanging out at Robin's house the entire time. So like what? You just wanted all these people orbiting around you? Yes. That's all. And it's all just of for these appearance. kids coming back home and adoring him as yeah. the patriarch. But for what? What have you like put into, what have you poured into these relationships after right. a certain point? Like after Robin, what have you really done? Yeah. Now he did talk about looking in the mirror at himself and like previously he's been able to look at himself and say, I love you, man. <laughs> He's been able to pray to God and say, I'm so uh. grateful for my beautiful family. But like he can't look at himself the same way because he sees himself differently. He sees himself the way that his three wives who have left him see him. Well, and yeah. so he's struggling with who he is in the mirror. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank Keep you. That. Keep going. That's great. You're not almost there, but at least you're pointed in the right it's direction. It's a step. So I was asking myself whether I believed that, like whether he feels differently about himself as a man, as a priest of the family. Like, how does he feel about himself? I feel like he just feels rejected. I feel like it's mm -hmm. still centered around the idea that like everybody is doing this to him and not he's the source of it or like he's part of the problem. So that's where I'm like, yeah, you probably hate yourself, but you probably hate yourself because you feel rejected, not because you fucked up this whole family and like ruined all of your relationships th with your children and the wives like you know what i'm saying yeah like it's it's not the right reason 
not like saying you should hate yourself, but like, I don't know. At some point, I, I was wondering whether Cody has tipped over into the realm of acting the villain, mm, whether weird. he is having some internal breakthroughs because you'd have to be completely unconscious not to realize that you are the one that did all this mm -hmm. or like you did the majority of this. You'd have to be really, really unconscious. And so maybe he does know this deep down, but because he needs the show to continue, he knows he needs to be the villain. That's wild. Can't you see it, though? I mean, yeah, but like that's like that's like Nakato Avocado level of like, I'm two steps ahead. I'm the villain. Like, why? Why because would you he play needs that? the show to continue. But I feel like you could be a better person. Yeah. And people would probably still watch. Maybe. I mean, it is fundamentally a very boring show. Sure, but we've been watching for 19 seasons now. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, and tell me what y'all think. Like, write to us on Instagram or yeah. here on YouTube. You can obviously drop a comment. It just felt fake to me. And some of what Robin was giving, especially out on Coyote Pass, also felt rehearsed and fake to me. Totally, yeah. So I don't know. Man, that's wild. Mm -hmm. If they have to play the villain mm -hmm. just to keep the show on the air. That's wild. Well, notice how the new intro was. Yeah. Mary looked fantastic. She's wearing cream and white. Mm -hmm. Janelle wearing white. Christine with her terrible red oh, lipstick good point. Yeah, wearing yeah. white. And then here's Robin wearing black and Cody wearing black huh. with his rings and his necklace and all of his bling bling, <laughs> but in black. So production is trying to signal to us or set up the season in a certain way. And maybe he's leaning into that hmm. because his gravy train is going to run dry unless he makes something work. And he doesn't want another wife. Yeah, that's true. He thinks he's a monogamous. So what else yeah. is he going to do except be the foil to his family? Oh my God. You could do anything else. Just though. a thought. Just a thought. I don't know. Just a thought. It's a good thought. Yeah. Pretty diabolical thought. Well, he's pretty diabolical. Yeah, he is. But is he that smart though? That's the question. To like act like a villain. Like maybe he doesn't even realize that TLC maybe is. Maybe I'll just be the demon that they well, think that's that true. I am. He did. Didn't he say something like yeah, that? He did yeah, say that's that. pretty much what it is yeah oh my god delia you might be onto something hi you might be onto something smart record uh, yeah you got a big old brain over there working that monocle oh now. my god and then we have um janelle and christine going to north carolina yes to move isabel back to salt lake city right now that christine's back in utah isabel's like fuck north carolina and also fuck you mom because yep. i'm not going to live with you in salt lake city i will not even spend a week with you in your single girl town home i mean i wouldn't want as to. you're dating all of these species too much this christine i mean it's i i can't the whole divorced mom thing is so cringe and also she's giving actress too in her yes. interstitials it's just like oh calm down just a little Please. bit so isabel does not want to live with christine but she does want to come back to utah she wants to go to college there yeah and so janelle and christine have gone to north carolina to move her back and i guess janelle uh, not janelle but maddie is going to be going on the trip with them yeah which would be great yeah and then Cody, I guess, finds out on the yeah. couch yeah. that they're doing all of this. And this is where he talks about FOMO, right? Mm -hmm. They know I suffer from FOMO. I want to be included. And they're purposely doing this to exclude me to make me feel bad. Right. All I'm about sorry. you, Cody. I don't feel bad for Main you. character over here. I'm like, you could be involved if you wanted to. But everybody else has to involve you mm -hmm. because you can't do any of the work. It's so wild to me. It's crazy. He also says something about Christine and Janelle. Like, oh, so Janelle went with Christine to bring Isabel back. He's just like, it's so ironic because Christine used to have such a hard time dealing with Mary and Janelle. And now all of a sudden, Janelle is just following her around everywhere. And they're supposed to be these fast friends. Make it make sense. That's wild to me. Because yeah. I'm like, again, this is how not present you've been for mm -hmm. years because janelle and christine have been friends the last several years mm -hmm. so like miss me with this he just shit. can't conceive of a world where he's not at the center of it he just yep. doesn't know how to be or exist in that space no not at all and yeah. i really don't think he can deal with the amount of rejection i mean three wives leaving him at once and the country is a lot and actually the, the world internationally <laughs> the world. he is very hated yeah. yeah yes i mean truly though yes. and like all of your kids everybody everybody hates you mm -hmm. So yeah, he probably can't deal with it at probably, all. Probably. And honestly, I love it. I love to see it. I love to see him squirm. And then they arrive in Salt Lake City. Maddie's there. 
and we kind of talk about how she doesn't have a relationship with Cody. Mm-hmm. The producers ask Cody, do you want to talk about it? And he's like, I will not. I will not discuss anything about Madison. Which was interesting. Um, Janelle does talk about it. Janelle says that Maddie is unwilling to have a relationship with Cody unless he can commit to having um, a, you know, a presence in her children's life. He can't just come in every once in a while whenever he feels like it or mm-hmm. when the cameras are rolling and play grandpa and then dip on back out. So because Cody, I guess hasn't really been making that effort. Maddie's like, no, thank you. Based. Which is interesting because you remember how much Cody loved Caleb. Oh, yeah. They had a complete bromance. Yeah. Like, Cody loved him, and so I would imagine he doesn't talk to Caleb anymore, certainly doesn't talk to Maddie, and doesn't see any of his grandbabies over there, only McKelty's. I wonder, I don't know if we've talked about this before. We probably have, but I forgot. I wonder if Maddie called him out on shit. I bet. And that's why he just doesn't want to make any effort. I think in the Christmas group chat, she was the one of them, one of the kids yeah. that was speaking up about all of the bullshit Robin was doing, which caused Cody to have to come in and start dealing with his kids. And I think she and Hunter and maybe a couple of other kids were the primary people. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking Speaking too. out. And now he doesn't want to talk about it, which is such bullshit. I'm like, give us something, dude. What are you going to do? Just spew vitriol about Christine and Janelle and them, but you're not going to talk about your kids? Oh, Well, we do have Robin saying that she doesn't understand and or know why Cody is not reaching out to Madison or making an effort with her. But at the same time, his kids need to be making an effort with him. And I just want to say, Cap, (laughs) you know exactly why, because the Christmas group chat happened Mm -hmm. and Maddie was one of the people to confront you specifically for having to always insert yourself into family shit. Yep. And so you're pissed at Maddie, which means now... Cody has to be pissed at Maddie. And if Cody were to reach out to Maddie and try to have a relationship, how would that actually make you feel, Robin? Probably pretty bad, so he Mm -hmm. doesn't because he can't. It's you. Exactly. It's you. And I hate the whole bullshit of like, it takes two. If the child has to make the effort to... Yeah, but if the child is making all of the effort and the parent's making none, then how is it fair? Like, that shit makes me so mad. Mm -hmm. I feel like as a parent, sometimes you have to just kind of go out like make the effort like you kind of have have to to sacrifice as let me tell you have to sacrifice as a parent and sometimes your kids are not actually they're not necessarily on the right side of what's going down but for the sake of having a relationship with your child for for the sake of having love and peace in your family you sacrifice what you think is right you sacrifice your pride you sacrifice things that you can keep your family together which is something cody won't do and we know he won't do this because we saw during the covid years when Gabe and Garrison tried to talk to him out at Coyote Pass yep. and talk to him about their mother and not seeing him, he was completely resistant. Yes. And I think that's the season he called them narcissists. Yep, and stupid. And stupid. Yep. And so the way that he even responded to his children who just were asking for more time from him. Yep. He was an asshole. Such an asshole. Yeah. He needs to go see Dr. Orna. Him and Robin. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? Well, people who want to get better go to therapy. Cody yeah. doesn't want to get better. No, because he thinks nothing's wrong with him. Mm-hmm. He even asks that. What did I do wrong? Oh, yeah. we could tell yeah. you. Do you. How much time do you have? <laughs> if you want to listen, yeah. we could tell you. Mm-hmm. And then last but not least, we have Mary in Vegas visiting her friend Brandy, who yes. I don't think we've seen before. I don't recall her. She's a new friend. I guess they were like really close in Vegas, but we are just now meeting her. And this is where Mary tells Brandy, yeah, me and Cody are officially done. And Brandy's mm-hmm. like, finally. Thank God. Great. So glad you got on this page. Right. Mary. And it's during this conversation and really during the entire episode that we're getting some of these fire yes. talking heads from Mary who acknowledges that Cody's probably going to be pretty pissed at her when he sees this interview. And I hope that this continues all please season yes so we talk about so many things off the top of my head she wants to talk specifically about cody's claim that he never loved her and that he never loved any of his wives when he married them Uh uh-huh and she's like so let me get this straight so you were just a young man who saw a young woman and you thought to yourself let me choose that young woman to try and affirm and love i don't love her i don't necessarily want her but i'm willing to affirm love to her for 32 years 
she said, is that what you're actually telling me? Or is the reality that it was you and me that built this family? We're the first ones. Hello. And after me came Janelle and Christine. And so if my marriage, if our wedding was illegitimate, that means Janelle's wedding was illegitimate and Christine's wedding was illegitimate. Yep. All for what? The reason is you love Robin, Mm -hmm. who was 10 years old at the time that you and I got married and started copulating. Which is so (laughs) wild that she said that. So Robin was 10 or 12 years old. Oh my God. What do you think her point was with that? I mean, like maybe calling him out being like, you never loved me. Well, you did have to love me because Robin was a child. I'm like, but did you guys know Robin back then? Mm-mm. No, right? No. I think she's just making a dig she's just towards like, the fact Robin that she's younger. Robin didn't exist. So you're telling me that you didn't love me and you only ever loved Robin. Well, she was 10 years old at the time. Right. And what about all the times we fucked? Yeah. What about <laughs> the child that we have? What about exactly. these other marriages and all of these other kids? What about the homes? What about the debts? Right. What about the money? What about the journey? That was not real? Yeah. No. It's so crazy. You're lying. I'm glad that she's calling that out. But at the same time, it's like hard for me that she's like, I mean, he was giving me all these mixed signals. I'm like, but he was literally saying, he was literally saying for years that he does not love you. He doesn't want to be with you. So, I mean. Yeah, but in order to get her to Flagstaff, he did promise her a new start. Sure. And so even though in Vegas, things definitely fell apart. And we know that he was not having sex with her for many years. And they weren't having like a full relationship. He promised her like once we get to Flagstaff, we're going to turn this around and we're going to have a new start. Mm -hmm. What he was really doing was waiting as she sold her place in Vegas. And then taking the profits and proceeds of the sale of her house and Janelle's. And then using that to buy robin's nine hundred thousand dollar home right. while mary rented janelle rented and christine owned a lesser home see if he was playing the vi- the villain he really needs to admit that he did all of that then mm-hmm. because otherwise i'm like you just look like a fool don't don't come at me saying that you didn't love any of these women but robin like that is such a load of bullshit yeah and then you're saying all of this shit to their kids and to the public like it's crazy so i love that mary's getting mad at that and calling him out for that i love how she um swore and said a curse word said you Mm -hmm. can bleep that out if you want Mm -hmm. great living for it i love that as well i do think that mary could probably acknowledge that well maybe she did because she even said maybe i should have been committed for being committed for 32 (laughs) years like maybe i was crazy Mm -hmm. for believing in this but i do think that mary takes her spiritual vows very seriously oh yeah it is her intention or at least it was that she would spend her eternity with this man and that's the life she was building as well and so for a lot of us who aren't necessarily religious or we don't really get it like that we Mm -hmm. don't understand it like it's a bigger deal for her and even though she may not have felt great about cody and their relationship she was working for a higher goal yeah definitely and she does take that very seriously i was actually surprised to hear her talk about their spiritual marriage because she mentions that and says that she's in the process of getting that I don't know, null and void. I don't know you what have you to do go in to the a, Mormon temple. Like, yeah, I have to, you think you have to go to like the elders. You have to go to the priest. You go to the priest. You have to have a reason. Men, and they have to like sign off on they it. Have they have to already it. been embarrassed by your family. And they're like, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Get the heck out of here with yep. all your bullshit. Yeah. But yeah, she's going to have to go through that process. It's probably similar to trying to get an annulment with the Catholic Church. Oh, is that a thing? Yeah. In Catholicism? Yes. When I was married to my second husband... Um, he had to annul his first marriage, which I'm like, well, why though? You have two children from that marriage. Why would you need to annul that? And he's like, well, in order for you to convert to Catholicism, which I was thinking about doing, I need to get an annulment. You need to get an annulment from your first husband, even though I was never a Catholic. It's crazy. The paperwork you've got to go through. So maybe with Mormonism, it's something similar. Like you've got to, you've got to write to the Vatican you got to write to Rome. And it's like actual them. paperwork you yes. do? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. What? In fact, the reason I never converted was because the priest who was handling my paperwork, which sounds so crazy to me, 
um, didn't submit it in time and, and didn't do all the things that he needed to do. Wow. So which you're I going just, to hell then. I took as a sign that I'm not meant to be <laughs> Catholic, <laughs> which is fine with me now. But yeah, it's a lot. So maybe oh, that's wow. what Mary has to do too. Something similar. Well, I know I've talked to Ethel about it before and she said that it's like a whole thing because you have to go to the priest or whatever, the elders, and then you have to write like a reason for it and mm-hmm. then they have to approve it. And then it's like this whole ceremony and like you know, weird secret handshakes and stuff that they have to do. And then it's, you know, God on Kolob is like, yeah, it's fine. You're not sealed anymore for eternity. And then you're free to maybe meet somebody else and become a new polygamist wife or something like that. I don't know. But Mary, go after what you want. I just want you to be happy. I don't know. I watched this episode and I have historically kind of been very irritated with Mary Mm -hmm. and her inability to communicate and just the way that she interacts in the family. And of course, we just went through season five. Yeah. With the wet bar. And I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. She's annoying. But I really appreciated so much much of what she said yeah I do think she at the time she's talking to Brandy on the couch in Las Vegas I think she's trying to be kind she's trying not to disparage Cody but by the time we see her on the couch wearing that little camouflage thing yeah I think she's a little more ready to disparage Cody so I'm hoping as we go on we get more from her she did mention Robin yeah and she doesn't think Robin is a bad person and she knows that other people in the family do think she's a bad person and a lot of the public think that she's bad but that she thinks she's a good person what do you think about that i don't know (laughs) (laughs) i think that they had an alliance and i think robin may have tried to help mary in certain ways during the relationships Mm -hmm. But I think Mary is starting to wake up a little bit to the fact that toward the end there, Robin was throwing her under the bus a lot. Remember when I think it was Isabel was coming for Christmas and Mary has a good relationship with Isabel and Robin never told Mary that Mm -hmm. Isabel was in town and all this stuff. Like I think Mary's starting to realize, oh, maybe Robin wasn't the friend that I thought she was, but she's not ready quite yet. Yeah. To throw her under the bus. See, I think Mary's a little naive when it comes to people. Like, she thought Cody was good until, like, just three recently. seconds ago. <laughs> so, yeah. and, like, she thought Cody had, like, good intentions with her. So, and he, he didn't. And then she's looking at Robin being like, yeah, she's not a bad person because she's looking at their friendship as a whole, as opposed to, like, what Robin's been doing with Cody this whole entire time. And maybe there's, like, a little bit of denial with Mary of, like, not wanting to accept the fact that this friend that she was so close with for years essentially stole her husband away Mm -hmm. and took part in the breakup of this entire family. Maybe there's some denial there, but like, I don't know. I was kind of side-eyeing that of like, Robin's a good person. I know other people think she's bad, but she's a good person. I think she was a little bit tempered with that. I don't think she was very adamant about Robin being a good person. She was like a little bit equivocating and acknowledging in her tone Mm -hmm. that there's some issues there, but that she still thinks she's okay. I don't know. We'll see what happens as the season goes on. Yeah, definitely. But I, you know what I was thinking about, Mm. Beatrice? I was thinking about Leon a lot Mm. because... I'm just wondering how Mary feels because the rumors have it, and these are just rumor, rumors all alleged, that uh, Cody disapproves of Leon's lifestyle mm-hmm. and therefore I would imagine Robin does as well. And I believe Leon is somewhat, if not full-on, estranged from Cody and Robin. And if Cody is disapproving of Leon and Leon's existence, I would imagine that would piss Mary off. For sure. Especially over time. Yeah, for sure. As the mother, like, you're going to be like, really, you're going to disapprove of our child? Mm -hmm. Like, you should love our child no matter what. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. And Leon and Mary seem to have a good relationship. Like, they post photos and stuff together. And I think Leon has a great relationship with the rest of the family for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think most people are accepting, right? Mm-hmm. I haven't heard anything else besides Cody and Robin. Didn't they just have a recent something or other in Utah or Wyoming? Janelle was there, but I think Leon mm-hmm. was there. Oh, were so, they? Yeah, I think Leon was there. A lot of oh, the good. other kids were there. So Leon's still a part of the family, but I think Cody has a problem with Leon being trans. That's Probably. just me and my fake psychic 
intuition, but I, I just think it. he has a fundamental problem with Leon's existence. And I think as time goes on, that's going to really bother Mary more and more. It'd be nice to hear about it, though. It'd yeah. be nice to, you know, know. And, and Cody, how do you think Leon feels hearing how you talk about their mom? I mean, for real. That you never loved their mom. Oh, for that real. you never should have married their mom because we see in the previews for the season he's talking about like yeah well the mistake was I married somebody I didn't love or the mistake was I married the wrong person so imagine being Leon or any of the other kids hearing their father say like I never loved your mom that's why therefore rendering you illegitimate not mm -hmm. legally but like energetically and spiritually right you weren't created out of love because I hated your mom apparently I mean even if it's true, like, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Don't say it publicly. Seriously. If you love your children, you don't say that shit publicly. For real. But he does not give a fuck. No, because he's pissed. And his ego is so damaged because all of these women left him. Because how dare anybody leave Cody Brown? Well, but what did he want from from mary let's talk about that like what was his best case scenario like he's like yeah you can live in the barn dominium we can just be friends you can continue to supplement the the money mm -hmm. that i enjoy and that my wife enjoys because so continue give us to give us money and we'll deign to let you live on coyote pass is that what he wanted her to do yeah and just to have the appearance of like he's a good polygamous man he wanted her to be okay with that but like nobody is going to be okay with being in a sexless, loveless marriage. Not even a marriage. Just a companionship, a I guess. A friendship. Yeah. Partnership friendship. Where I just live on the same property and like I bring you cookies for Christmas, mm -hmm. but then that's it. That's our only inter mm -hmm. interaction. I think that's what he was hoping for. I think that I think was so his too. best case scenario. Just yeah. put her in the loft above all of his storage in the Barn Dominium and yep. I'll see you from time to time. And otherwise, you're persona non grata to me. Exactly. But I'll see you in the afterlife, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can still share we're my sealed. planet. Yep. Right. Exactly. Wild. Wild. But wild. I won't touch you there either. <laughs> right. I think we end the scene with Brandy, with uh, Mary talking about not knowing what to do with the mementos, yeah. like the photographs and the ornaments with all of their pictures in it. And well, she also said like she's really pissed at Cody for leading her and everyone else, including the viewers, to believe that he was this guy who believed in polygamy when yes. now all of a sudden you don't. And she says that Cody has actually said words from his mouth that he thinks polygamy is not fair to women. What is that coming and from? And Brandy says, that doesn't sound like the Cody Brown that I know. Mm -mm. And on the couch, Mary says, well, maybe it's just you, Cody, that weren't fair to women. Mm. Mic drop. Mic Bomb. drop. So based. But do you think he actually says that? Do you think yeah. he actually believes that now? I, I think he actually said it. That's why. I don't think Mary would have repeated it unless he said it. Why would he think that? Why would he say that? I don't know. That would mean that you, in effect, are unfair to the wives that you no longer have. Yes. Like, is it a moment of awakening or is it just him trying to disavow something he said he believed to make it easier for him to be monogamous now? I am not sure. Or is it him putting the blame on something other than himself? Like, oh, it's polygamy that's bad to him and not me. I was a good husband. Right. I did the best that I could. I'm not a bad guy. It's polygamy. But we're supposed to believe that Robin still wants polygamy and that she's unhappy because right. none of these other wives are around and she wants to have other wives. So I don't like, lady, I was gobsmacked when I heard that he said that. And then when Mary retorted in that way, I was like, yes, queen. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But now Mary's left with the aftermath of this fake fucking relationship that Apparently. she's trying to commit to. Yep. And years upon years, 32 years of artifacts and evidence supporting her relationship existed. What's she supposed to do with all this shit? I mean, what is she supposed to do in general? Like, I mean, you were married to this guy for 32 years. You gave most of your life to him. So now you're alone. And like, that sucks. Maybe that's why she's doing her worthy up thing to make herself feel better, mm. which is fair. Like, I feel bad for her, honestly, because now she's alone. She has nobody. 
Yeah, I mean, we won't get started on Worthy Up and like how much time it would probably take for you to heal from this situation Seriously. specifically before you can go out there and try to help other people to heal on in their own lives Hashtag and on their own journey. Up. We don't have to get into that because we've gotten into it before. Yeah. But I, I did feel very bad. Like I have a box right over there. Yeah. Filled Small. with love letters from my second husband, your wife's father pictures yeah when we first met pictures of us all together when your wife was just a child like these pictures which I would never burn yeah and Mary's not ready to do it either I mean I would never get rid of and it's been I don't know 16 years or however yeah. many years it's been and I still haven't given those things up because yeah. it's a part of my life that I don't want to forget and I'm so grateful for my daughter. Yeah. And I'm even grateful for him and the right. things that we learned together. So that's just part of divorce. And it's really hard. It's really hard. I remember when my mom and my dad got divorced, my mom had a hard time getting rid of everything. Like she got rid of the most shit. But the only thing that she kept was like all of the photos. So like mm. we have all of their wedding photos and stuff like that because she never wanted to get, never wanted to get rid of it because she always said, you know, you girls might want that mm -hmm. like those are your parents you you know you still had that that's your childhood mm -hmm. those are your memories like that's important so like mary's probably going to keep it but it's going to be hard yeah to keep it all and that sucks it does and yeah i i can relate to that i i really felt for her as she started yeah. to cry and her sentiment that she wants to remain kind even though cody is not kind and right. brandy her friend even acknowledges like all the shit he has said about you how come you're not more mad and right she's just like i just i want to conduct myself i want to take the high road i want to conduct myself at the highest possible level which i respect that's fair but i encourage her <laughs> to stop that shit immediately and start telling be the petty. truth and start dragging this man be angry reflect back to cody brown exactly who the fuck he is yes please he even talks about it like we just said like talking about looking at himself in the mirror and it's hard to see him based on see himself and love himself based on what his three wives have been saying about him because Aww. he's starting to internalize it and that is what we want and yeah. so mary give it to him baby please you're the one that knows the most give it to him please yes It'd be so great if she wrote a tell-all book or something just yes. dragged him yep. through the mud i'd love to see it mm -hmm. well he laughs about it on the couch did you catch that? And she's like, yeah, I know. Mary's now making her little statements about me. I'm not going to comment on it. And he just laughs. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah. She's holding a lot in. Mm -hmm. Imagine if she let the floodgates go. Oh, my God. That's why I'm kind of hoping he mm -hmm. continues on this path of being the villain and saying this fucked up shit because maybe he'll say something just fucked up enough that Mary will just be like, you know what? Sue him. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to say all of this shit that you did to mm -hmm. me, everything that you did to the other wives. Mm -hmm. There's more stories than just my ring, baby. Yep. yep. I know it. Mm -hmm. That'd be so great. It would be fantastic. <sighs> it's the hope and the dream of the raccoon. I'm going to pray to God on Kolob. Yes. Dear God on Kolob. <laughs> dear Mormon Jesus. Dear Mormon Jesus. With the Jesus. pachyderms. Please. Please. And I feel like... Did you get the sense that Mary was super chagrined that they were going out like this? Yeah. Like polygamy and what they've shown the audience and what they've shown the world. Because I think she went into it with the right intention mm -hmm. for them to show that like polygamous families can be functioning and healthy and full of love. And they just ended up showing something so fucking toxic. Yep. And she's really sad that that was the example that they made. Oh, yeah. I would be. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, this is our legacy. Really? Like, we're going to break up after all of these years? Like, wow. Yeah. I'd be upset. Yeah. And actually, the guy from My Five Wives, yeah. it's a very boring show. Okay. I mean, good. I've never seen it. It's like there's some, like, little tidbits and stuff, but they're not as dysfunctional as the Browns. But anyway, he's got five wives. He's a polygamist. He lives up in Washington. He commented about this whole thing just recently, and he said that Cody is such a piece of shit. Like, basically just, like, how could you do this like you are making a mockery of polygamy mm -hmm. and like you didn't do this right and like if you're saying you didn't get married for love then what did you get married for like that's right. the whole point of polygamy that's a whole point of our faith like what the fuck are you talking about he called him out 
Oh, was really? really great. Yeah, just recently. Fantastic. And we know that Joe Darger also called him out yes. a couple of years ago. I love it. And that's what needs to happen. And you know Cody respects and needs the validation of men. Of course, because he's gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my God, I didn't say that. You did, Beatrice. Oh my I'm God, we've been talking it. for so long. Let's I wrap know. it up. So the preview was something we have already seen. It was the season preview. Yes, Christine dating David. Don't care. Uh, Hi, baby. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Hi, baby. <laughs> the fucking lip biting. I can't Take it. I can't. Janelle talking about suing. Yes, but she doesn't. Well, but maybe they settled. <gasps> maybe so they maybe settled. We'll get to see it. Maybe they mediated. Oh stuff. my god, please. Maybe there's conversations with lawyers. Yeah, maybe. Yes. Yep. And then we have Cody and Mary arguing. Yeah. We have Cody meeting David, which I love to see. Right. It's gonna be a nothing burger. I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's gonna be some looks shared. I feel really? like David's gonna be like this guy. He's a loser. Uh, Cody has inverted testicles. <laughs> he's got no boldness, and I don't <laughs> think David testicles. cares. Yeah, David doesn't oh care. Oh my god! And then Robin saying she's losing respect for Cody, but yep. we think that's bullshit. Yep. Cody trying to reconcile with Janelle because he's broke, honey. Right. <laughs> he sees the writing on the wall. <laughs> he's broke. He's like, you're making how much with Lexus? <laughs> Oh, you're looking I have beautiful today. Oh, my, oh my God. God. I've never I feel seen like you so radiant. we could get together again. Don't you feel this? I don't <laughs> feel it. I do not feel it. <laughs> don't feel it at all. And then him, Cody, saying, blame yourself if I don't love you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so terrible. That's so great. So we should put that on a shirt. We should. <laughs> Oh my God, with raccoons. We should put that on there with one of our worst reviews. Bleep yourself if you don't love us. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so good. <laughs> You're internalized. So oh me. my God. Well, blame yourself if you don't like me. <laughs> Seriously. Jesus, what's not to love? I mean, uh, hello. Well, do we have anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, you better. Be going on to your favorite podcast platform and leaving us a glowing five-star review. It really helps us grow the pod so we can get fatter. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We will be back later this week to talk the secret lives of Mormon wives. I can't wait. El Scandalo. Oh, my God. Swingers. Oh, my God. I'm so... Orgies. Orgies. Ketamine. Extensions and fillers. <laughs> Domestic... It's going to be great. So make sure you come back for that. And until then, please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you. And 